In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Somebody else needs that you're able to provide it. 
and you show that hospitality to others. So for this neighbor to refuse to come down, this would have brought shame upon him, upon his household. And for this other man to continue knocking at this door determinedly in the middle of the night, it's almost like announcing his shame to the rest of the neighborhood, seeing this man who was denied him. The point here isn't that God is lazy. He needs to be roused. The point here isn't that God is inattentive or ignoring us. And if it was, and if God was ignoring us, then the shame would be on God and not on us. The point is that we remain persistent and consistent in our faith and in our prayers. We remain faithful in our prayers even when we don't see the response. Even when we don't know exactly how God is responding. We can remain confident that God is responding and that God hears all of our prayers. God is not oblivious to us or our needs, or what's going on in our lives. Sometimes we don't have the words that we need at the time to pray what we need to. Sometimes all we can do is offer silence. There are times in life when we've been through an event that's so unexpected that we don't have the words. And at times like that, when we can't speak of it, all we can do is offer that silence up to God, knowing that God hears the silence, hears the prayers that remain silent in our hearts. The author, Anne Lamont, a few years ago wrote a book called Thanks, Help, and Wow. And the premise of this book was that all the prayers in Scripture basically come down to one of three kinds. Thanks, help, or wow. Prayers of thanks are those prayers where we give our gratitude to God, expressing thankfulness for all the blessings and benefits that He has given to us. Thanks. Prayers of help, self-explanatory. They're prayers that we say in times of need when we are going through difficult things. <coughs> We're praying for God to make His presence known, to guide our feet, to Show us the way to go and to be present with us. Help. Those prayers of wow. Prayers when we are simply basking in the glory and celebrating the radiant, radiant divinity of God. Giving thanks and just praising the glory of God Almighty. Wow. Now personally, I believe that there's a fourth kind. There are times when we have to pray, why? Why has this happened to me or to them? Why is the world the way that it is? Why is this going on? <coughs> I think those tend to be the hardest prayers to say. The prayers of why. But even when we can't find the words that we're looking for, in those moments that we can come back to those touchstones of our faith, like the Lord's Prayer, like the sacraments, the Psalms, the prayers passed down in our tradition of the common prayer. We're not repeating them just because it's tradition. We're not praying them just because they're old prayers that have been long around for a long time. We pray them because they continue to speak to us. They continue to reorient us back to God in those moments when we feel adrift. When our faith isn't anchored. We feel like we're floating away and don't have the words we need for it. Sometimes it's okay to let the language of the church pray for you. It's a matter of praying them intentionally. And just not out of repetition. The Lord's Prayer continues to be meaningful. For many of us, it's the first prayer that we learn as children. And there are many for whom it is the final prayer that we speak in this world. So, whoever it is that taught you to pray, whoever it is that taught you the Lord's Prayer, 
I hope that you continue to pray for them and for yourself. And as you do, pray with the confidence that God is attentive, that God is listening. No matter how loudly you shout the prayer, or how softly you whisper it, or if it remains silent in your hearts, too much for words to speak. God is always attentive.